divine order. <laughs> and so we're doing things exactly as we are supposed to do. Let us pray the prayer for all people. Surely the presence of love. No, not even. I'm going to do that. Surely the presence of love is in this place and in all places and in all people. Knowing and accepting this, we bless all people, no matter their race, their color, their creed, their abilities, their gender identification or expression of love. Knowing that there are many paths to God, many names for God, many faces of God, but only one God. And this God is expressing through all creation in many, many ways. We come together today to experience and express the Christ spirit that dwells within each of us. Please join me in affirming our statement of truth. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the good, omnipotent. And today's daily word We're not going to sing Shirley the Presence today, because we know that Shirley is here. Okay. Uh, today's daily word is balance. This one's for me. Okay. With God, I live a life of balance. Work can be a fulfilling use of my talents and efforts. I may enjoy the challenge of growing in responsibility and using my ambition to accomplish great things. But if I work too much or for too long, my energy might start to wane and my thinking may become dull and uninspired. Likewise, too much leisure time may rob me of motivation and pull me into a spiral of inactivity. Spiritual practices bring precious balance into my life. Through prayer, I touch eternity and feel the presence of God within. Through meditation, I focus my mind and feel calm and grounded. Through speaking affirmations, I claim divine ideas and act on inspiration. In gratitude, I find balance in God, the one presence, the one power in my life. And from Job 31.6, let me be weighed in a just balance and let God know my integrity. And that is today's daily word. Uh, I need a bulletin. It's a new month. It's a new power that we're looking at, which is the power of order. Uh, the green hair happens next week. So, but we have green flowers. Louise is wearing a lovely green. So this is our, the power of order and our new affirmation, which is understanding divine order. I can embrace paradox and navigate chaos while keeping my balance. I've said this often. What we focus on comes, comes to you. And so I'm experiencing this as, we, as this day goes on. <laughs> and I love it. Okay, so let's affirm with me. Understanding divine order, I can embrace paradox and navigate chaos while keeping my balance. So that was a good rehearsal. Okay, now let's, let's do it for real. Understanding divine order, I can embrace paradox and navigate chaos while keeping my balance. One more time. Understanding divine order, I can embrace paradox and navigate chaos while keeping my balance. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and meet and greet from your seat. Just go ahead and stand up and give each other a big wave. And if you're watching on Facebook, good morning. Go ahead and type, a, type in your name and give us a, a big old hi. Hello. And let us prepare for our opening 
meditation. I invite you to sit comfortably or as comfortable as you can in your seat. Whatever works best for you, feet flat on the floor, hands on your lap, hands on your heart, wherever you need them to be. I invite you to close your eyes or gently lower your gaze. And I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose, hold it for a couple seconds, and then release through your mouth. So let's breathe in. And out. Let's do that again. Breathing in through your nose, breathe in. Holding. And release. And one more together. Breathing in. Holding and breathing out. And just breathe easily and naturally. Order. The intelligence of the universe expressing through each of us. The intelligence of the universe. God, Spirit, expressing through each of us, expressing through you, expressing through me, expressing through us, expressing as you as me, as us. In Daniel Namod's song, My Soul is Welcome Here, he wrote, I'm in the right place at the right time. Knowing that you are right where you're supposed to be, even in those uncomfortable moments, is trusting in the power of order. Also discerning if that is the right place is also trusting in the power of order. Trusting that the intelligence of the universe is expressing through you, as you. By saying yes to spirit. You're saying yes to what the universe has in store for you. Following is a meditation on the power of order by Reverend Bronte Colbert. I call upon divine order for balance in my daily journey. If I'm feeling overwhelmed with responsibilities or life feels out of balance, I turn away from outer appearances. I picture, in, I picture my life as a beautiful path, a journey of discovery and joy. One step at a time, I move forward into what is mine to do. I see all aspects of my life in order against a backdrop of gratitude, spiritual purpose, and direction. If I am wishing for something that has not yet appeared, I trust that my good easily comes to me in divine timing. I see my body working in divine order. It is healthy whole and full of energy and life. I take time to appreciate nature, its beauty, balance, and perfect timing. I delight in the symmetry of a seashell or the layers of art in a cloud. As I create a sense of order in my home, work, 
and activities. I discover balance and peace. As I affirm, there is one presence and one power in my life. All else falls into place. I claim divine order now. In a few moments, we will rest in the silence. May this be your mantra. Yes, God, I claim divine order now. Yes, God, I claim divine order now. I will break the silence in a few minutes with a song. But I invite you to continue this mantra. Yes, God. I claim divine order now. Yes, God, I claim divine order now. Yes, God. Will release any. 
Good morning. And then for all the others, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> oh. Okay, so here's the issue. I kind of lost hearing in one ear, and um, so if I get too loud, because if, if I can't hear myself, I may shout, just go like this, and I'll know to tone, tone it down, right? Okay, so we have a son who lives in Portland, and he lives in Portland because he was having issues with extreme heat in Tucson, Arizona, and a friend said, why don't you come and, you know, up here to Portland? It's, the weather is gorgeous. So we did, and that was several years ago, and then this summer, <laughs> they had the worst air quality on the planet for a while because of all the wildfires, right? And then they had this massive heat wave where they reached 116 one day. So it got me to thinking about how the world seems to be on fire. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like to be right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's on fire both physically, literally, and then figuratively, okay? So there are wildfires burning, not just here in this country, but in many countries around the world. And they are destroying, you know, beautiful forests, towns, homes, schools, businesses, a way of life. If it isn't an actual fire that's causing heartache to millions right now on the planet, it's the, what, the pandemic, the storms of unprecedented uh, strength and scope and economic and political upheaval and every possible craziness that humans can dream of against each other. I mean, crazy. Today's problems on Earth may not be new, but when you're in the midst of them, they feel very personal, don't they? Yes. They can shake our faith in ourselves and in each other and in God. They can shake our faith in our ability to find solutions and answers. They can cause doubt and uncertainty about our future in ways and to a depth that we per perhaps have never experienced before. I was just with someone recently just having a lovely breakfast and all of a sudden she said, I just wish I didn't have this constant uneasiness. And I said, what do you think that is? And she said, well, I just feel fear from everywhere. Imagine. Talking to another friend recently who happens to be a therapist, she shared that other therapists and counselors and health practitioners are reporting that their practices are full for several months out and that they can't even find a space for new patients or new clients. So there seems, everybody seems to be feeling this in one way or another, this storm of fear that's making its way across the world and then right through our everyday lives. We need, dear friends, we need new tools for this time of living. We need tools that deal with these fires of anxiety and uncertainty. We need to light a backfire. Do you know what a backfire is? Anybody raise your hand? Ah, good. So when firefighters are facing a potential strengthening of a wildfire, one of the solutions that sometimes they can use is to set a backfire out ahead of those advancing flames. And this consumes some of the 
combustible material and it creates a fire belt that the wildfire has difficulty crossing. Is your mind and heart protected that way? Is your faith protected that way? Here's a cool thing. That backfire can sometimes stop the spread or change the direction of the wildfire. So I've been thinking a lot about that. How do you set a backfire in your faith? How do you set a backfire of spirit in your mind and heart against the spread of fear? So that's what we're going to look at today. But first, I'd like to share with you a different perspective of fear. Think of this for a moment. What if fear is not the problem that we make it out to be? What if fear is not something we need to avoid? What if it's not a red flag at all? What if it's instead a signal that we could just be on the edge of a breakthrough to something better? Wow. So there's a wonderful little book. It's not a big book. It's a great book, though, by Kim Dinan, D-I-N-A-N. And that book is called Life on Fire, a step-by-step -step guide to living your dreams. Doesn't matter what that dream is. A step-by-step -step guide to living your dreams. Life on fire. And this is what she says. This, is, this was so huge. I wrote it in seven different places in, in my journals and my office. Fear does not want you to do something out of the ordinary. Isn't that something? Fear wants us to stay with the conventional. She also says, that's where I got this little line, fear is not a red flag. It exists because there is no road map for what you want to do or what you're in the midst of. And I was thinking of this, you know, I think we become afraid of dying because we don't have a road map for it. We know more from the internet on how to make good chili <laughs> than how to get ready to cross over. Isn't that something? So she says, the future is unknown, and that unknowable blank in our mind, that unknowable blank canvas is scary to us. So let's remember, dear ones, that Fear has a purpose. It comes from a part of our brain that wants to keep us safe. That's its job. Did you know that, that fear has a purpose? Did you really? Anybody? I didn't. You did. Good. I did not realize that. I will admit it. That it had this purpose of keeping us safe. Okay. But life wasn't given to us to stay safe. I'll repeat that for me. Life wasn't given to us to just be safe. Life is an adventure, and it wants to be lived out through each and every one of us. It's an adventure. So when we look at the purpose of fear, we can see that, well, okay, it doesn't have to control me. I don't have to be afraid of fear. Afraid of fear. That sounds like a gerbil wheel, doesn't it? <laughs> we could either be, every day, alive in our skin, on fire with faith and purpose, 
or on fire with worry and fear. It's a choice. It's all a choice. And in case you didn't hear that, it's all a choice. So I think it's important to understand that to be on fire with life doesn't mean to be engaged in more frenzied activity. That's not what we're talking about when we talk about, you know, life on fire. It means to be more purposeful and conscious and intentional in our activity. Have you ever noticed that if you're doing something usual, that you kind of check out and you realize, whoa, wait a minute, whoa, wait a minute, I, I wonder how many pages of this book I turned and didn't read, right, or whatever. To have a purpose and intention that comes from our spiritual life, from our spirituality. And one author called spirituality an enlarged inner sense of the sacred. Isn't that beautiful? An enlarged inner sense of the sacred. So when I was getting ready for today's talk, I was thinking about how earlier in my life I was deeply devoted to the religion in which I was raised and to the rituals and practices of that religion. But then in my late teens and all throughout my 20s, I could feel something inside that was moving me out and away from dogmas and rules of a creedal system and into, you know, wild imaginings, into exploration and experiences of the sacred everywhere in life. And I studied different religions and did some of their practices and still this thing would just keep moving me out that was nice, now what else? That was good, that worked, now what else? It was always this something about the what else. It used to just bother the heck out of me that I couldn't just be satisfied with one thing and stay there. But life is always evolving, isn't it? Just think about it. It's taking us through one change after another. If you look at your life right now, sitting here today, and you go back seven days, you will see that you went through changes, didn't you? Some of you very big changes. By the way, this keeps coming to my brain, so I'm going to say it out loud. So, Because somebody here needs this, I am assuming. When you think you don't know something, when you think you don't know what you should do next, what's your you know, highest purpose, why are you here, when you think you don't know that, what does it do to you? Stifle. Say it again. Stifle. Yeah. What else? Does, any, does anybody here say it makes me crazy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have a solution. Your mind will believe anything you tell it. And if you tell it often enough, I don't know, it goes, we don't know. We really don't know. But if you assume that you already know the answer, it lights a fire of awareness in your mind. And you say that often enough, I know the answer. Your mind believes it and so it delivers the answer. There's nobody in the way of our answer. I was just reading in the Course in Miracles this morning and it said, do not look outside yourself for your answer. The answer is where? within. It's already there. 
So getting back to where we were before, whoever that needed, you know, whoever needed that, you can thank me later. Change can be scary, agreed? Yes. yes. It can look and feel like chaos. And there is that chaotic change happening in millions of lives right now. It could be right here happening to you in your life. And maybe that's why you're here or that's why you're on the Facebook page today listening. Well, I want to, I want to share something with you about that chaos thing, that change thing. The wonderful priest and social psychologist Omerchu wrote a book called God in the Midst of Change, Wisdom for Confusing Times. Whoa. Sounds like he wrote that and published it when? Yesterday. He says, in learning to befriend the chaos. And I almost stopped right there and said, whoa. Hello, I never thought of befriending chaos. I'm going to go further. In learning to befriend the chaos, we become more grounded in our earthiness and in our embodied selves. In other words, we, we stop trying to jump out of our life to jump out of our problem, to jump out of our grief, to jump out of our confusion. And he's saying do just the opposite. He says, we become more real, honest, and truthful, and we learn to let go of old securities no longer useful, no longer useful, for our evolutionary emergence. The advanced class on that will start next Tuesday. Just teasing, because some of you are going. Yes. This is what he says finally. Thus, we are made free. When we make friends with chaos, we are made free to be open to the new and more adventurous and courageous in exploring a novel future. The future into which life is always inviting us. So, Life wasn't given to us so that we could keep our hearts safe. Life is for living full out on fire with love. Likewise, dear ones, faith isn't a place to hide out. Church isn't a place to hide out. Bless you. It's not a place to hide from the challenges of life, but a place from which to be boldly present in the midst of the experiences of our lives. It's a very different thing when you decide, I will be boldly present in whatever nonsense happens today. Wow. Yes, why not? There's such a big difference between, you know, a faith that is passive, a place you've just kind of settled down into, you got comfortable there, and a faith that is courageous and spiritual action. The way we keep our faith out before our fear is to make it active and vital even all-consuming, all-consuming in our everyday life. Not just, you know, the occasional reaction to a scary situation. I wonder how many of us are used to asking for prayer just because. One of the things that fascinated me for 30 years in ministry is when I would say to someone, what can I pray for you? Uh, 
uh, well, I don't know, it's pretty good. Life is okay. Everything's fine. Really? You didn't have a bigger dream than that? To just have everything okay? Is life, is your life really going to be that way? Is it just going to be okay? I'm sorry if this is bothering you, but I, I need to say these things because you brought me here. You invited me to be here, so I'm going to say this really firmly. I think, you may not like this vocabulary, but it's what came to mind. I think our faith is supposed to kick us in the ass and get going. I really do. I think our faith is meant to just kind of bump us out of the usual, the normal, the everyday, the safe and bump us into something we didn't even dare to dream before. Before we said, all right, spirit, here I am. Light your fire. Light your fire in me that I may be all you made me to be. Light your fire in me so I may think outside of the boxes I've been living in, the boxes I created. There it is, that nice little safe box. Wow. See, when we do that, when we live only in the box of safety, this is what happens. Life comes along and it implodes on us. It punches inward to our safe little box. And we get scared because the purpose of fear is to keep us safe. safe right and we don't know how to handle that unexpected did you ever have a prayer in the morning okay God do your best give me the unexpected I know I can see people going I, I, I don't I don't like that prayer <laughs> I don't really like that prayer. Why not? If it came from God, if it came from life, if it came from the universe, are you not safe always in saying, okay, God, here I am, I'm ready. Give me the unexpected. Whoa. The fire of faith burns away the untrue, the limiting the no longer needed. And at the same time, it illumines what is needed. A faith that is alive, dear ones, excuse me, there goes the voice. First the hearing, then the voice. Gee, man, I think I need a new affirmation. So a faith that is alive helps us face the doubt, the, the fires of doubt, the fires of worry, the fire of uncertainty, and the fire of fear. With the fire of God's loving presence, the certainty that the universe is always conspiring for our good. I keep faith going in my life by repeating words and prayers and affirmations that leave no room for anything else. I even sometimes early in the morning when I'm, you know, up and walking and doing little exercises, I'll make up little things in my mind. And one day, I don't think I made this up, but this little thing came through my mind. I move to the rhythm of spirit. I act with the pace of God's grace. And that didn't leave room for anything else. You can't have a bad day when you do things like that. You just can't, unless you choose to. So living a life on fire with faith means that we trust the good, we trust the process of life, we trust the universe always conspiring to help us. Ask yourself just for a moment, real quickly, before we're going to play an awesome song for you, 
okay? Ask yourself, where in my life am I just settling for things when they no longer satisfy me? Where am I hiding out, afraid to do something new? Where do I have a secret pain or a secret dream? That is where you need to light a fire under your life. Light a fire under your life. Light a fire.
you love that? Do you have a clue of what the theme is? <laughs> okay, so when our life is on fire with faith, we have, as the song said, fire to do what we don't dare yet. Got it? Fire to force us from our sleep and fire to risk it all for love. Don't let anything or anyone hijack your faith. Don't let anyone or anything hijack your fire of chosen purpose, your fire of passion and your place. Don't let anyone or anything hijack your peace of mind and your sense of direction. And if you lose your way, don't worry about it. Don't, it's, you know, if you get scared, don't worry. It's just fear. Don't let it scare you, right? Yes. Yeah. So you just say to the Holy Spirit, I need you. All I really need and want is your fire. All I need and want is your fire. fire. All I need and want is your fire. fire. Yoo-hoo. Wow, Louise. <laughs> Aren't you glad you were here today? This is awesome. This is, this is a great place to be. This is a great way to think. Um, I, I think a few of you know for a while I attended the School of Metaphysics and, and uh, studied dream interpretation. And fire was, uh, if you dream of that, it's consuming, that, consuming something that longer serves you and creates a pathway for renewal. So, thank you. It's an awesome message. <clears throat> and um, now is the time. Um, here it is. <laughs> now is the time to prepare for our love offering. I invite you to go to our website, unityofindy.org, and donate online or mail a check to Unity of Indianapolis at 907 North Delaware, 46202. And as you prepare your offering, we'd like to acknowledge any first timers. If you're here for the first time, you just raise your hand. Great, thank you. <laughs> we're glad you're here, um, and we believe that you were here by divine appointment. And uh, we hope you enjoyed uh, today's service, and we hope to see more of you. And if you're watching for the first time online, just type in your name and let us know that you were here. Uh, we're blessed that you're with us today. And now please take your offering in your hand or visualize your gift. I invite you to hold your offering in heart-centered intention as we affirm our blessing over our offering together. Divine love, working through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, all that I receive, and I am grateful. Yes. yes Thank you. Yes. And uh, just a, a quick announcement. Um, we're having our first Sunday brunch uh, in the friendship room after the service, um, and Reverend Michael Davis is going to be talking to us. Um, so you get to listen to somebody else besides me. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, please join us, and we'll be sharing more information at that time. Again, thank you for being here. All right, it's time for the peace song. Let's stand up. As we sing the peace song, I want you to visualize the world standing hand to hand, heart to heart, soul to soul. <laughs> Thank you. 
us pray together in the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. 